Hi class, Steve Katie here. I'm going to walk through instructions on the fun and grow post. And as you know, in our learning from seeing some of the information provided, the process is a two-step process. You do your initial post as a mini paper uh, by the due date. The day after the due date, you come back and have a discussion with your group. You have the link for guidance on how to complete a post. And I think it's important to make sure, as I've mentioned, that you have key terms from the chapters, from the resource materials, from the links that are provided. Use key terms in your answer and make sure <clears throat> that you bold those key terms. The reason being is you're, you're saying that I am using this key term, I know it's a key term, and I'm using it in an answer in a way that shows how I can apply it. It shows I understand how to use that terminology in the response to an answer. And so you're demonstrating your mastery of the concept and you're practicing with it by being able to articulate. And again, the key terms in this course are those terms that are going to be a part of those informational, inter those behavioral interviews. They're going to be a part of you being able to make a case and talk intelligently about how organizations operate. It's going to give you more ability to express yourself and to stand out in terms of having that personal influence and organizational savvy. So question one goes, it's at the behavioral interview question. We're gonna remember, as I mentioned, we always begin the questions with the behavioral interview question. We will end with the uh, leadership question and focus on your leadership interview. And in between, you'll have something about important concepts and, and exam questions, usually a reflection on the class. And then you'll have uh, applying the concepts of the course to IDC West, as you see here in questions, uh, question two and in question three. So let me go back up and start at the beginning with question one with the behavioral interview. There are two parts to this question. You have your question. Tell me about a challenge you faced on a team and how you handled the situation. So you're going to be drawing from the groups and teams chapter, and you might draw from other concepts in the other chapter. And what you're going to do is you're going to use the concepts to tell your story. And you're going to use the STAR, situation, task, action, results. And you're going to lay that out, situation, give a response, task, give a response, uh, action, give a response, and results, and give your response. You're going to weave key terms into your response so that I can see you're using terminology in your answer. And uh, then you're going to go to the second part of the question, 1.2. And what makes for a bad interview? And particularly, you know, interviews can be as an interviewer and an interviewee. And so here I gave you two examples of, of really bad interviews. And uh, so what I'd like you to do is review those two, give, give, share your opinion with us on what makes for a really bad interview, provide a link that you found on your own, do your research, find a link, that is open access on a video, blog post, or a story that tells the story about a really bad interview or, or describes it. Um, and um, so provide that in your response as well. And tell us a little bit about that, that link that you're providing, that video or link to that blog or whatever it might be. That's 1.2. Now we get to move into the fundamentals chapter and apply it to IDC West simulation. And this is going to be focusing on uh, this. The opening really is about someone has to be picked. Actually, multiple people have to be picked. And as you think about it, it resonates with this notion of these interviews um, and, uh, and, and picking people and how people separate themselves or help themselves to stand out. And so as you review the situation in IDC West, there's an opportunity for Jake to select a team. Based on the interviews, who would you pick and why? Who would you not pick and why not? Use content, key terms from the fun chapter to support your answer. And note, go to the modules in Canvas and the fundamentals module, watch or read the script for the situation in IDC West. Do not apply the diet approach or anything like that. All you're doing is just providing who you would pick and why. Now, you go to the next one. You're going to have a section in the fundamentals that focuses on the manager's action research process, the diet, D-I-E-T. Here's where you're going to begin to learn to use it. So what you want to do 
is read about that. It's the it's the module. It's the it's the last module in the chapter. And what you want to do is apply the D I E T to Oil Hat Joe, and it's below here in these videos, video one, and video two, and video three. And so we're practicing on using the manager's action research process. Now here's a cool thing. Action research has been around for a long time. Action research is an evidence-based approach to making good decisions and taking action in organizations. Managers who have use great evidence-based approaches and are, are confident and are able to have robust solutions, that is solutions that get results that they want, um, those are the people that stand out and succeed. So the manager's action research process is a way of ensuring that you take a robust approach to how you will address situations. And you can use the managed action research approach uh, process, you can use it for any situation, not just in a managerial situation. So you got oil hat Joe, watch 3.1, scan the situation and state the mission. So you've got the fundamentals uh, chapter. When you open the chapter up and go to the intro, at the very top is gonna to be a principle statement. You want to read that statement and read that section, bring that statement and restate the statement here. And also determine what's the mission. So episode one gives you your mission that you need to accomplish. So scan the situation and, 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 and describe the presenting issue. Here we're doing it with Oil Hat Joe. So you watch the video below and you're going to watch the video and determine what is the, what is the, the situation that you're facing? What is the mission you have to accomplish? And I want you to relate the mission to the principle statement at the introduction for the fundamentals chapter. So you state the, state the fundamentals chapter principle statement at the very top. Uh, as you open it up, you'll see the statement there. You state the mission. Here's the mission we got to accomplish here based on what, I'm, what I saw in video one, my mission. And then you relate the two. How does the mission relate to the principle statement for the fundamentals chapter? And uh, you got the statement here. I just think you need to add in what is the mission and how does it relate to management can be taught and learned. Now, once you've done that and you've scanned the situation as well, you describe the who, what, when, and where. You give a nice kind of objective observation of what's going on. You, and you got your mission, you've got your principal statement, you've related the two, you've described that nicely, you then move to 3.2, video number two, the diagnosis. The manager's action process, manage, manager's action research process has diagnosis as the first of the D-I-E-T, the diet. And so in here, you've got, a, you've got a situation that's shown here in video two. So now you're getting more specific into the situation. This is presenting you your challenge. And what I want you to do is scan the situation and state the challenge that you face here that video two is, is presenting to you. There's a challenge that has to be solved. And what I want you to do, state the challenge and relate that challenge to a competency statement in one of the sections of the chapter. You got competency A, B, and C. So relate this to one of those competency statements. And in here I'm saying competency C. So take a disciplined approach to solving problems and telling your story. So what is the challenge that you face here? What is, and how does it relate to this competency statement? Restate the competency statement, restate the, uh, state the challenge, relate the two, and now you go into diagnosing the situation. And this is the latter part here that you can see. Diagnose, D. The challenge, why he or he is or is not doing what is desired. What is causing him to act that way? And then the next piece after D is I in the diet. That is propose your solution, your recommended intervention. An intervention is an action you take as a manager to solve a problem. So anything you're doing to intervene in the situation, this is what you would recommend being done to help solve that problem. And now remember, as it says here, use key terms from the chapter content in your answer. And so you wanna make sure you bold the key terms showing that you understand how to apply the terminology. And remember, I said earlier 
that you look across the competency statements, I want you to go ahead and focus on competency C. So make sure you focus on that and relate the challenge to competency C. That's important. Now let's move, move to 3.3. This is video three. You've got the D and the I in the, in the manager's action research process. Now you move to, to the episode two. Episode two is the conclusion. It tells you the successful completion of the situation. And here with Oil Hat Joe, what I want you to do is provide a brief scan of, this, of, of what happened in the, of the situation there. Now, how did it conclude? And then what I want you to do is evaluate the results. What action was taken? What was the intervention that was taken? And what was the impact on the situation? What was done and what was the impact on Oil Hat Joe, on the environment, on behaviors, on people? What was the impact on that situation? In, in terms of behaviors and performance and attitudes. So what I want you to do is make the connection between the, the manager's action and the result, the consultant's action and the, and the impact, evaluating that impact. So now that you've described that, I want you to go to the very last in the terminology, which is T, which is transfer. And what transfer gets at is how do you take the learning from the situation and be sure to repeat the success in future situations? And so there's two parts that I want you to answer. First is in Oil Hat Joe and in that factory, and in that company, what would you recommend be done so that they can continue to learn from this and keep things going? Is there anything that can be done in terms of training, anything that be, can be done in terms of procedures, anything that can be done to help make sure they learn from this so they can repeat doing good work as managers and consultants? Then the second part of the T is how do you transfer the learning to your dream job and your ideal organization? I want you to describe how would you, how, how could what you learned here, take that dream job, take being in situations in that dream job, and in, I, in that organization, and what might you what might you want to make sure that is done in your dream job, based on what you learned here. Now you're done. You move to question number four. Of the, all the concepts that you reviewed, fundamentals and groups and teams, uh, what is the most important one to you? What did you find most helpful? Provide the term, define the term, and describe how it is helpful to you particularly within the context of your dream job in your ideal organization. How do you think it will help you in that dream job in your ideal organization where you'd like to work? Now you move to the applied exam question. What I'd like you to do now is take that term and turn it into a level three or higher Bloom's taxonomy question. And what you do is you create the question, you provide the answer, you describe, you, you show the, the proper answer, then you describe why it's the right answer and where that answer can be found in the chapter content. The next question, number six, is based on what you've learned thus far, what are successful tips for discussion boards? In your opinion, to get a discussion board done well, to perform well, to get the most out of it, and to score well, and you've reviewed all the tutorials, you've listened to the class sessions, what are your tips for getting a discussion board done successfully? Now we move to the last question. This is the scheduling your leadership interview. And this is who are the two people you are going to interview? Now I'd like you to identify that, those two people. I'd like you to get the interview scheduled and you wanna schedule your first person to happen during the period for discussion board number three and the second person to occur during discussion board number four time period. You can go on and look in the calendar and you can see where it says discussion board opens and submit your discussion board. And you wanna do the interview during that time period so you can have it in and submitted as a part by the due date for the discussion board number three for interview number one and for interview number two by the due date for discussion board number four, the last discussion board. And you can just count them. You see discussion board one, two, three, and four. And, this, and, and the other thing is, if you have problems scheduling an interview with a person, find in somebody. You have the ability to interview somebody who's in a managerial position. So at a minimum, 
interview somebody in a managerial position, in a leadership position. And a maximum, you're going to find somebody in that ideal organization in a leadership position that you would love to interview. And you can schedule the interview with them by simply doing the following. You get a hold of their secretary, their administrative assistant, their, their associate, a colleague or a friend of yours, somebody that they know, or them directly because you have access to them. And you basically say, I've got an assignment to interview leaders that I admire. You're someone I admire. Would you have 30 minutes of time for me to, to have a mini informational info interview with you about your leadership journey? And what you're going to find is they are super glad to return the favor to those people that have helped them. And you will get interviews that you never thought you could get. And you can be creative. So this is the other part. Don't, don't just sit back and wait for it to happen. Don't be passive. Use this class as an opportunity to step further into your own personal leadership. Step into your power. Step into that which you know you want to become more of. That lion that you see in the mirror. Step more into that person. Use this class as an opportunity to find your edge and stretch a little bit more, a little bit beyond that. And so go after a person that you'd really love to talk to. And, and, and maybe you find five and you ask five and two have the time. That's awesome. And you just keep networking and use your networking skills. I had a student who wanted to work with this really boutique and cool, innovative um, uh, technology company out in California. The person did this. He found the web designer's email address. He then took the email address and replaced the front end with the name of the president of the company and sent it. And lo and behold, it did go to that president. That person contacted him back, had the interview. He ended up getting an internship and flying out to California. I have another person who um, it got a hold of somebody over in Cleveland in Swage Lock, and it's a company that's never hired an intern from BG up until that point in time. Got a hold of somebody, interviewed them, and they got an internship with the person after doing the informational interview. And get this, the two of them came back the following year and talked with my class about the importance of doing it and shared their story. So don't underestimate the power of these interviews and the opportunity it provides you to open up, op op provide opportunities to, to open up opportunities for you to go after that. So now you've got your questions one through seven done. You got the conclusion, you got the introduction you need to write. <clears throat> and remember your introduction and your conclusion are intended to be unique to you and, and really well done. The introduction is an inviting, uh, compelling invitation in to read more about what you, what you wrote about. The conclusion is a great reflection, a wise and thoughtful reflection <coughs> on your overall experience and takeaway from answering the questions. Once you create this mini paper, you then submit it. Now you might say, man, this is a lot. Yes, it is. It's an online class. It is a mini paper that you're submitting to your group. It is going to serve you in going after your dream job and ideal organization. By submitting it to your group, you are going to read some other amazing posts. They're going to read yours. You're going to, your, your, your story is going to impact positively the people in your group. And what you read is going to positively impact you. So it is, it is and you've got a, a window of time to get it done. And um, <clears throat> this is a part of online classes. So this is a significant component of your work in this class. And so get this done. Give it the, the attention that you deserve. Let me say that again. Give this post the attention that you deserve. You deserve to give yourself the best. And so with that, you post it by the due date. The very next day, come back and have that interactive conversation with your, with your uh, teammates or your group mates in your discussion board. And what you first do is review through the, the posts from your group, pick out five, and respond and reflect on their posts. Give them kudos, positive comments, give them suggestions. I've seen people post videos, provide uh, links to really helpful information, give them names of people to talk to, help network with them, um, reflect on how, how, what they could take away from the post, and, and, and pose questions. 
And so you reflect on five and then have an interactive conversation. That means go back and forth. I don't, it's not just a post and you're done. Thank you. No, it's a post, give a question. They answer, they give a question. You post, give a question. You go back and forth and really have an engaging conversation online because I wanted to build your skill set. And then as you go, you can see um, some best practice videos, as I mentioned from previous uh, semesters. You got this outline, as I told you, I'm a stickler for a nicely laid out post. Make sure it is, make sure it's complete. You answer all the questions and all the sub questions, that it's professional, well laid out, well written, and that it's thoughtful and that you're explaining things, you're explaining your thinking, you're laying things out well, you're using key terms from the chapter and you're bolding them throughout the entire post for all the answers to your, your questions. That, along with a great discussion, will get you full credit. So I look forward to seeing what you come up with on this, and uh, that's it. More to come. Bye for now.